Yes, that brings us to uh, our next uh, session of today. Um, we'll be uh, talking not only via Zoom, but also with Zoom in our next uh, session. I'm, I'm very glad to have Josh Kalmer here with me again this year. Uh, Josh, yeah, great of Hi, you to, to join us and it's lovely to see you again. Great to see you, Rebecca. Thanks for having me back again. So, Josh, um, yeah, we, we've been we've been meeting basically in in a, in a different, yeah, like in the same matter uh, one year ago. How's it been for you at Zoom? Wow, it's it's been it's been tremendous. I think you know, Rebecca, a year ago, I recall we it was the end of September, and we discussed uh, both the the quantitative change that Zoom had experienced with, with such a rapid growth of, of users and, and diversification of use cases. Um, we also discussed the qualitative growth that we had and just how the company came to terms with uh, what it meant to have to be thinking all of the time about really important data protection issues, data security issues, uh, regula regulator interaction issues. Um, and I think on balance, it's we, we've made tremendous progress. Uh, we now have a, a company that is substantially larger in those areas. I, I think we've had you know order of magnitude growth in our security team, our data team, our privacy team, uh, my team, which which uh, you know interacts with regulators, uh, and so we are uh, making great progress the, the the commitment to these issues is, is rock solid um, but of course we're learning all the time and we're working to get better uh, all of the time the journey continues of course you know life uh, compared to a year ago for, for most of us is probably somewhat better but it's not where we want it to be and I think like like everyone we're, we're preparing for the future we're preparing for a hybrid world uh, and we have things like data protection really at the heart of how we think about it and would you say the, the the privacy policy sphere has changed uh, since last year, or how how do you uh, look look at the issues, especially if we uh, discuss international data transfers, as, as we so often have to do these days? Yeah, you know, I, I wish that we could say that it's changed more from the perspective of the the global. Uh, landscape, you know, the, by the time we talked last year, Shrems 2 had already happened. We'd been plunged into uncertainty, and and certainly it's it's understandable that uh, with with a major U.S. election and and other developments, it would take some time uh, for the regulatory landscape to uh, to change. But you know, it's been over a year now, and uh, I think you know, not just not just Zoom, not just technology companies, not just companies from the United States. But uh, European, U.S. companies from around the world, across sectors, are still uh, having to deal with with really profound uncertainty around the the rules of the road when it comes to uh, to transferring data, and and that is you know that that's not just uh, impeding innovation and economic growth uh, and job creation, although it's doing that, but but from our point of view, it's actually it's actually impeding privacy. It's actually impeding uh, data security because we're reducing uh, or we're, we're preventing ourselves from, from having uh, the kinds of transatlantic connections that, that cooperation on those topics uh, requires. So uh, we're, we're still hopeful. Uh, we're still spending a lot of time thinking about it and, and trying to support our colleagues in both the, uh, the commission and the US Department of Commerce as, as much as we can. But uh, I wish I could say we've seen more change uh, over the last year. That's an interesting aspect uh, to say it's it's actually bad for for privacy the the environment that has been created and is uh, furthered by um yeah some some of the of the arguments in the ongoing discussions but I I think I I heard from what you say um from what you said that data exports are necessary basically uh, can you maybe elaborate a bit more on on that aspect Sure. I mean, I'll say first, you know, we, and I hope I conveyed this last year as well, and it continues to be a theme. I mean, we, we as a company have the utmost respect for the fact that, that in, in Europe, in Germany, privacy is considered a fundamental right. 
uh, we we understand that and we seek to align our our policies with that. It's really important to us, as I mentioned last year, that that uh, people feel in every market where we operate that that we that we get that uh, and we you know we comply with GDPR. Uh, we have minimal data exports from 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 Europe. Uh, we operate on the basis of the updated standard contractual clauses, uh, but we also recognize, and I think companies on both sides of the Atlantic recognize, and I think increasingly governments recognize that uh, it may just not be possible uh, to to keep all forms of of data in a single physical uh, jurisdiction. And so, the our perspective on it, I think, is that you know we should focus. Uh, as much, if not more, on the actual measures that we take, we being both companies and governments, to secure data, uh, and and maybe focus a little bit less on physical location and more on those operational, uh, technical, institutional, and human measures that we take. And 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 to be clear, I'm from a U.S. company, and and uh, I speak with an American accent, but uh, nobody has more obligations than the U.S. government. And the U.S. government needs to be held to account. Uh, and so as we look, for example, to the Privacy Shield negotiations, that's something that, that we care a lot about. We uh, completely associate ourselves with uh, concerns of Europeans about, uh, about the, the, the access of any government uh, to their data. That, that's uh, that's also a very very good point. Uh, we actually talked to Alex Greenstein yesterday at, at some length about the um, negotiations surrounding the enhanced privacy shield that will hopefully be here soon. Um, but I think our, uh, what our, our viewers are also interested in is, um, yeah, I would say some, some ongoing uh, cases that you have been involved in. So um, if, if it's okay for you, would you elaborate a bit on, on the, the, the court case that is going on in Hamburg? Yeah, so I, you know, I can't uh, talk in detail about an ongoing matter, especially because you know it was the it was the data controller that was approached by the DPA, not not Zoom directly. But of course, uh, we were you know in the news. It had to do uh, with our company. I mean, I think the the and we're doing everything we can to you know support uh, a, a sensible, legally compliant outcome. But I, I think our takeaway from it is that it just highlights, and, and it's not just the Hamburg case, it's not just Zoom, it's actually a lot of companies that we've talked to in different parts of uh, not just Germany, but U Europe as a whole, there are different interpretations of Schrems too. And we, we see that across the, the 18 data protection authorities in Germany, the you know 44 or however many it is across uh, Europe to, from, you know, at the one end view that that all data exports, by definition, uh, are non-compliant with GDPR. Uh, to on the other hand, you know they can be compliant if you are uh, acting consistent with uh, Commission recommendations. Um, and so, again, I mean, this is the the very practical day-to-day -day business manifestation of the uncertainty I referred to at the at the beginning that that companies are having to uh, to to confront. Uh, and I will say, I mean, much of the activity that our that our small and mighty uh, public policy team has has undertaken over the last year has been about um, trying to engage with, with data protection authorities directly or indirectly to overcome uh, some of those differences. Now, we we again, we understand and we respect that that each of these entities has independent legal regulatory authority. They have a specific job to do. Uh, we don't intend to, to interfere with that, but uh, the, the Hamburg case uh, and cases we see elsewhere that are affecting other companies really do uh, reflect this, this more systemic uh, uncertainty that, 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 that companies uh, and countries you know, around, not just around Europe, but including the United States and others, are facing because of the absence of a clear understanding of what that decision means and 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 ultimately uh, genuine political will to overcome it. I'm I'm just wondering if 
would you say that political decision makers actually understand or have a have good understanding of the issues at hand here, especially regarding the the uncertainty that is still created? Because you, you have kind of a kind of a broad view, right? Uh, because at Zoom, as you said, you're a uh, U.S. company, but you're um, yeah active in uh, I guess throughout Europe um, nowadays. So yeah, would you say there's a good grasp on on the on the issue, because I think we do, we actually do need that to find a solution someday, right? Yeah, I, it's true, and I think the answer is yes, yes, and no. I mean, there is a there there's a high degree of uh, sophistication among privacy professionals within the governments and within the DPAs through you know, of course, throughout Germany and throughout most of Europe. Uh, and and on the United States side as well, um, but what there seems to be lacking, and I and I recall this uh, from you know the experience over five years ago of of trying to support the creation of the Privacy Shield, there is a, a less good understanding, and and in some cases I would say respectively, respectfully, uh, a, a lack of understanding of. Of what's at stake and what it needs, what it needs to mean on the part of uh, senior level policymakers. In other words, um, again, data protection authorities, uh, regulators, the people charged, you know, courts, the people charged with I I interpreting the the law and applying it, are are doing their jobs, and we respect that. And and we may have uh, differences in the conclusions they come to, and and you know concerns about the uncertainty that's created, as my last answer uh, suggested. But ultimately, they've got a job to do, and they're doing it to the best of their abilities. Um, but there's a bigger picture here, and it goes back to the point I was making early on about the the the, the view that we shouldn't see privacy and economic growth or privacy and innovation as at cross purposes here, quite the opposite, they're, they're, they're aligned, they're mutually supportive. Uh, the only people that can effectuate that vision in a real way to overcome this problem are senior level policymakers on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, and so, you know, we've We've now had about you know eight months of the Biden administration. Uh, we've had about two years of this commission. Uh, granted, it's been a, a highly uncertain time geopolitically, um, but uh, you know I, I think it's important to just be direct about it. We we need to see leadership, and I think uh, companies on both sides of the Atlantic. I mean, there there are so many European based companies that have a stake in this that move data for the very same reasons that uh, you know that the companies that have a you know a US flag as their you know headquarters move it uh, we all need to support the senior level policymakers in in seeing that vision and seeing that alignment and ultimately thinking of practical ways to to get to yes um, but uh, there's no, you know, ultimately there's no substitute for political will. So, so we need leadership, uh, maybe also in in the discussions and the ongoing negotiation for the, uh, yeah, so-called enhanced privacy shield. Are you, are you optimistic or are you rather a bit pessimistic mm -hmm. if a consensus and an, and yeah, an agreement can and will be reached in in a sensible time frame? <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I I have to remain optimistic. Um, you know, when you've been in international public policy, you you uh, you learn how tough of a road this is. I used to, you know, I've I've been doing uh, privacy now for five or six years. I, I certainly do not consider myself an expert. An area I I still feel in many ways I know better is is international trade. I used to be a trade negotiator, and I actually uh, negotiated one of the most Difficult chapters of the largest bilateral trade agreement that the U.S. the U.S. has with any partner, which is with Korea, um, and that experience, among others, just showed me you, you have to put in the work. 
You have to stay up late. You have to strain your brain and consult and travel and do everything that needs to be done to get to yes. And it's very painful, but you, you, you just have to remain uh, hopeful and, and focused on, on the end result. And I think ultimately you have to uh, be very respectful, respectful of where the other side or the other sides are coming from and try to incorporate their priorities and their values uh, into, in, into your point of view. And so, um, no, I, I remain hopeful. Zoom remains eager to support. Uh, we're a relatively small player among the, uh, the, the groups of, you know, companies that are out there, but we try to be an active one, uh, and we're always available, uh, to meet with, you know, policymakers and, and industry partners and others on both sides of the Atlantic to try to think through these things. Yeah, and may maybe if, if we look, well, yeah, if if we look one one year ahead, Josh, I, I really hope we'll be meeting again, uh, possibly in in person. That remains to be seen. But yeah, what do you think we'll be talking about one year from now? Because you already said last year we already talked about the uh, the consequences of of Rams two and how international data transfers uh, might be destabilized uh, or how they can be re um, stabilized. And this year we we we, we did the same basically. Uh, yeah, what well, what's next year? <laughs> yeah, that's no, a great question. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, consistent with the, the theme of optimism, uh, recognizing we're still in a pandemic and we've had, you know, a, a number of things happen just honestly in the last several weeks that have been politically uh, turbulent. I'm, I'm going to project that we are in a better place, um, that e even if there are negative judicial developments on this topic in Europe, that we will see... Uh, a year from now, a, uh, a European Commission that has, um, you know, it's got it one more year under its belt. It's, uh, you know, we, we've come through, we haven't finished the pandemic, but we've come through it incrementally in a way where there can be uh, more focus on these kinds of issues. Uh, we've got a new German Chancellor. Uh, which will make a big difference. We will have the French election having happened, uh, and we will have a, uh, a a U.S. government, I think, that is able to be a little bit more focused. We will hopefully have seen some progress on the uh, Trade and Tech Council, which, although it doesn't technically deal with data protection issues, uh, uh, we all know those kinds of interactions can make a big difference. Uh, and I would be, you know, shocked if the topic didn't come up in Pittsburgh tomorrow. Uh, so um, while I can't project with a lot of specificity what it will look like, it does seem like the pieces are in place to be in a better place. I, I hope by that point we actually have either an enhanced agreement or some sort of uh, framework for, for for ending the uncertainty. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if we don't, at least I believe we'll be in a better uh, a better position, and and hopefully the you know companies will continue to support policymakers and regulators, and we'll keep talking to each other because you know it's it's certainly not even a second best; it's a third best. But in the absence of of, of clear rules, a communication, and the lines, you know, the, the the open channels with regulators and companies are critical. That sounds great. So we'll we'll be optimistic and we'll stay yeah. optimistic um dear audience um uh, josh will be available after the session also for for additional questions and in the meet the speaker session so please feel free to um pose any questions there josh we already ran out of time let me just quickly take a minute here to to thank you again because i i already did that last year but i think you as many other uh, companies did especially uh, those that provided digital means to to work to stay in contact and uh, to keep everything running basically you did us all a massive service and for that, we are grateful. Thank you. I hope we'll be seeing each other soon, not uh, next year at the privacy conference, or maybe also at next year's privacy right. conference, but I hope we'll uh, be seeing each other sooner uh, also. So, but for today, right. thank you. Likewise. Thanks so much, Rebecca. It's been a pleasure.